पेपर्स एंटरटेनमेंट टेलीविजन टर्न ऑन द हीट पेन साधने आलर गले आड़े आलम काटूं निगरची विमन आइकॉन इंद्र विमन आइकॉन इल नाम संधिक पोगम नबर साधना सोमसेगर इवर नास्कम अवार्ड विमन लीडर्स इन इंडिया अवार्ड लीडिंग चीफ मार्केटिंग ऑफिसर इन इंडिया अवार्ड इंडियन लीडरशिप अवार्ड फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट मत्र पल विरदार साधना सोमसेगर तन वाकव नमुन पगर्कन अडयालम का निक्ची विमन ऐकॉन Hi everyone I am Sadhana and I'm here in Chennai in my office which is Focus Infotech Future Focus Infotech and I understand that uh, this program is all about inspiring women and that is something which I am personally very passionate about uh, as an organization we deal with people but I have been in business and uh, I represent uh, NASCOM at the DNI that is diversity and inclusion Uh, for Tamil Nadu, and recently uh, DNI has also included me. NASCOM has included me in their national steering committee. So it's uh, it's my, you know I'm humbled. It's my pleasure to be able to communicate something of my journey on a topic which I hold very very close to my heart. My uh, message to women, not so much a message, but more a belief system which has come through my experience, which now is about 23 years in business, is that uh, we are actually in a very good position today in 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 terms of the century that we are in we ha- do not have the problems that our mothers and our grandmothers had with regards to opportunities and we especially in our country and maybe in other parts of the world too are much better positioned than women in many other parts of the world where they don't even have civil rights we have civil rights we don't even think about that we can go out we can work we can earn our livelihood we can come back we can do anything however it's also a, a you know a fact that there are very few women who have reached leadership positions now i'm going to talk to you about leadership because i believe leadership is not just restricted to the professional world it's also a part of your life you if you're not a leader at home how are you going to manage a family and make it something unique how are you going to give a message to the children that you have how are you going to be a partner to your spouse do you always want to remain somebody on the back seat or do you want to be somebody who walks ahead if not shoulder to shoulder so one of the big challenges which we Uh, observed is very few women continue to re- continue in whatever chosen area that they have to the last mile they give up they either remain you know they break away from their careers so what i would like to say is hardly 15% of the women all over the world we're not talking about india across the world have reached cxo positions sitting in the boardroom we don't have that you take ngos it's a common known fact that ngos are women driven but you know what is uncommon is that only 22% of the ngos are owned by women or managed by women at the top level you take countries across the world legislative the governmental positions you have barely 15 16% who are heads of state it's improving but we are very very far away from that position so we have to recognize this it is not because opportunities do not exist it's because we decide to step away from the opportunities so i have a few tips to give you all one is please do not quit before you actually quit what do i mean by do not quit ninga vela inda vela mudira modale veli varadinga enoda tamil romba mosamana tamil irnalum naan romba dhairyama da pesuven and adu apdi da ninga life um ornu parva illa seriya pesudha illaya naan solra message ungalku puriyano so naan thirupi english la pesa pore don't quit before you quit which means your life even when you're a kid it's planned right your parents decide which school to send you then you decide which college you want to go what subject you want to do you even decide what to cook and what to wear why are you not deciding the rest of your life why don't you decide when you want to have a child why do you have a child when right in the middle of your career i am talking to you from where i have practiced this i got married like normal indian women okay i decided to have a child only when i became a manager why because when you become a manager you can delegate if you are a front end programmer or you are a sales person or your systems and an analyst where you have to go on field you can't you can't have a child because then you have to take a break from your career and once you take a break from your career it is very difficult to go back one we ourselves don't feel like going back to the industry will start asking you know you took a break in your career you're not experienced stuff like that 
so please plan your life do not quit before you have to quit many times when we have a girl child at home psychologically we think nalla padike vekkano engineer aavano doctor aavano adu avlena parvalla kalyanam panni koduthidalam do you have the same rule for your boys no it is an insult to think that a boy has to sit in the house we think about girls like that so the first thing is thought unless your thought process changes a drastic change is not going to happen and i am saying this to women it is not for somebody else to think for us you have to start thinking take my own uh, experience with my team members with people who i interact with when we have a meeting i find round the boardroom table or the conference table the men come and sit where are the women they sit at the back you have to learn to sit at the table only when you sit at the table you are going to get attention the eyeballs are going to focus on you you will have to open your mouth and talk but we decide to sit at the table behind the table why ask my colleague who is standing there in the corner where do the women occupy they go and sit on the side right so one sit at the table only when you sit at the table are you going to be heard and it is necessary for you to be heard the third point which i want to communicate is about you know everybody thinks success means having a career it's not necessary okay you have to decide whether career is a thing the path you want to take or you don't want to have a job but you want to have a job at home you have to decide it career is not for everyone there's nothing wrong in not having a career but you have to take that call now once you decide that career is going to be something that's important for you then you have to take the ball and run with it you have to you have to realize that in when you have a career there are going to be challenges when i had to travel recently my son was having his board exams do you think i can postpone the meeting because my son has a board exam do you think your husband would do that so when you reach leadership positions you have to take hard decisions when your son is there saying mom i'm nervous how can you leave me and go i have to say look i'm leaving you with your tuition teacher i have to take that call i have to bite my lip and take the call and still go and do my job that is what it takes to reach a leadership position there are no free meals there are no concessions in the board room they do not differentiate between male and female you are as much under the, under the scanner as anyone else so we have to stop talking to ourselves to give concessions to ourselves and finally which i want to tell the women who are listening to this is give your daughters i don't have a daughter i have two sons but i don't see a difference give your daughters a chance not just to be respected and strong women give them a chance to have a choice they should have a choice of what they want to do let me give you i i believe that any message is best communicated through a story and i'm going to give you a very factual story which you have to convert into action items life boy so patti ketirukinga paathirpengle inge railway washroom le edho chinna theater oda washroom le edho government office le or pink color romba kolakalana or soap this was a story of life boy when many many years ago now it, it is a hindustan leave a product right so they decided that they had to make a change to the perception it cannot be considered as a cheap poor man soap so what did they do they decided that life oil after all was a healthcare product it's a soap right so they are not going to make biryani or they are not going to make cars they have to remain in healthcare they have to remain in areas of such products so what did they do they took the soap and they made made it different they made a new kind of soap not that slimy one they made it look better it looked like kame or dove or lakme or whatever they bought other products like shampoos oils bath oils so what did they do they augmented their product line this is called augmentation when you improve yourself when you add you improve your skills what did i do right i spent 23 years in business people will say oh why should you study anything more you've studied on the job no last year i went and became a certified ceo coach i had to study like a student i had to sit in a classroom i had to write exams so what did i do i augmented my skills that's what life boy soap did they augmented now is it enough to augment so they have a beautiful now they have good soaps they've got shampoos you go to neel grease where is life boy back shelf now you go to buy a soap you will buy dove kame finished story over so augmentation is not enough next step is packaging why is the same yellow and that what is that red and white cover will anyone buy will anyone know that life boy inside is different they won't know so life boy change their packaging so when you are a professional your packaging when i mean by packaging i mean how you talk 
how you look how you dress is very very important okay it is important even in your house because that is the message you give your children if the whole day you're going to walk around in a in a house coat you are not going to be bothered nobody is going to treat you specially so it doesn't matter whether you're in office or whether you're at home my colleagues will tell you when i'm in office i'm almost always in my room nobody sees me but there's not a day i don't come dressed as though i'm going for a meeting because that gives me confidence to behave the way i should behave in office the way i have to talk in office so packaging is very important now you have augmented yourself you have become better maybe you're a cook you become a better cook maybe you're a manager you have gone and done pmp certification and become a better manager you have changed the way you dress is that enough if you're still in the back shelf so take life boy again great product beautiful cover beautiful packaging but where are they nilgiri shop back shelf consumer walks in buys da buys scammy goodbye no business so the last point is positioning it is extremely important that you should be seen you should be heard you should be positioning yourself in the right forum what is happening here this channel has reached out to me through social media because i was there if i'm not on social media if i was not in nascom if i was not in future focus my position would have been different but maybe knowing me my position at home also would have taught me because i am confident about myself and i do not want to be mediocre you have to take that decision do you want to be ordinary mediocre person who got born one day died one day what about the years in between so positioning is extremely important if you can follow these three things in any part of your life augmentation that is improve your skills package packaging and positioning it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman you are going to be different and difference is what makes you unique so that is what i have to say to you all uh let me tell you a little bit about my own journey i started my life when my formative years were in bombay and it was i would say a great platform because my parents were very conservative but they were broad minded both my parents were scientists and we lived uh, i took it for granted but we lived in pali hill i studied in a parsi school then my parents felt that we were getting too westernized so they moved us to a very typically indian school in the 7th standard so i had to learn to adjust very young you know when you're in a school for many years and then you're transplanted to another school a totally different culture we used to have french prayers in the parsi school in the indian very indian school i had yakund in the hindu tushar in the morning and vande mataram in the evening so cultural change but these were learning experiences which i if i look back now i realize that learning to adjust started very young so um, growing up in bombay very competitive environment i had we had to be back we were just two girls back home at 6 o'clock some of the traditional aspects of lighting the lamp was all inculcated mom trained us to be you know today if i don't have a career i keep telling my children i can become an excellent cook in somebody's house i can become a fantastic tuition teacher or a nanny so the pride in being able to do something excellent that regardless of snobbery regardless of the fact that oh i need only a white collar job i have told my sons the same thing even if you want to be a carpenter go ahead be a carpenter you don't have to be an engineer or a doctor but be the best carpenter that the world can see so that feeling was inculcated from youth and uh, then my father decided that he had enough of bombay life and we moved you can't believe it they took us in the middle of my career was just taking off i am trained as i'm an, i have a post graduation in medical pathology i graduated in microbiology and my career was just taking off in jaslok hospital where i was in, uh, doing you know my internship and that's when my father decided he had enough of bombay and they took us to pondicherry you can't believe it for a person to have grown up in bombay to go to this small town called pondicherry was like a shock but again uh, i am a person who is an optimist even if i feel bad i will sit and cry whether it's the board room or somewhere if i have to cry i will cry i am not somebody who bottles things but i let it out of my system and that is very important please don't keep things inside and because you know finally it comes and hurts you it haunts you so uh doesn't matter pondicherry i suddenly realized there was a great french culture there i could be different so i uh, spent two years actually one and a half years of my life working in the sri arbindo ashram nursing home purely pro bono free service and because i wanted some money for half a day 
I went and worked with an architect. I'm not trained to be an architect, but I was a site supervisor for an American architect. So I had my cycle, very different from Bombay life. In Bombay, you can't ride cycles. I used to have my cycle and my big straw hat, and I used to go home, you know, back and forth on a cycle. That's when my sister decided that she wanted to do her MBA and move to Chennai. So my mother, uh, she has been the guiding uh, spirit for me. She said, look, when you're with your parents, you don't have to work. Augment yourself, what I told you, improve your skills. So she said, if you want to have your own laboratory, which is fully automated, you need to know something about IT. Why don't you go with your sister and study something in information technology? So that was how my journey started and I moved to Chennai. My parents put us in a hostel here, the YWCA students hostel, which was very strict. After six o'clock, you can't go out. So it was great. But I used to be homesick. I used to be more in Pondicherry than in Chennai. But nonetheless, spent two and a half years, instead of spending six months studying computers, I spent two and a half years and got a post-graduation in honors in systems analysis. And in a campus interview, Modi Olivetti selected me. I decided not to go to, because that job was going to be in Delhi. And my father said, if you're starting your career, better to start it at home when your parents are there because it's a new world. So that's another message. When you start something new, make sure that you have a support system in place. Okay, even if you're starting a job and you have children, make sure that you have support systems. Because when you have a support system, your plan remains on track. You don't get shocked into something. The shocks will come. But at least if you have a support system, the shock is easier to manage. So I took up the job my career actually in a company called Aurelec, which is in Auroville. And Aurelec was also a fantastic environment for me because the CEO was French, Kalia. The, C, the head of research was German and the COO was an Indian woman. So I had a multinational environment which played a big role in my formative, in my, you could say, my career or my professional life. So uh, I spent, I'm not somebody who rolls. I remain with what I do. So this is another message. Don't keep changing. When you make a goal, you make a decision, stick by it, whatever be it. You may have to change your business plan. You may have to change some, you know, dots and full stops, but stick with whatever you've decided. So I spent 12 years in that company. I started as a systems analyst. And when the company changed hands is when I was almost the last person to, uh, you know, from the leadership profile to move on. I was their vice president for international operations. So once I changed uh, from Aurelec, I, uh, this is not to, you know, beat my own drum or to paratify myself. It's a fact. I used to be continuously winning awards. For me, winning an award was not something which was a position of ego. It was a self-motivation for me to win an award and I was to benchmark myself against somebody else. It was for me a self-improvement plan. Like a review, you have self-appraisals, you have annual reviews. How do you know whether, or you have a report card. For me, competing to win an award was a self-discovery process. Is there more for me to learn? Am I good enough? So I was an award winner continuously in, in, when I was in Aurelec, which became Nexus Computers. It had over 36 branches in India. I wanted to, to sort of uh, understand for myself, did I achieve what I achieved because of an organization or was it because of sadhana, the sadhana inside me? So when we moved to Chennai, and it was the first time I was moving with two small children. Okay, my uh, elder son was just about six and my younger one was three. And I had no parents here. My parents were in Pondicherry. I decided, let me start my own company. I did not want to start a mom and pop show. So I said, if I start something, I'm going to start it in the right way. So I started a private limited company, a proper private limited company. I used my, my gratuity and PF because I did not want to take money from anyone. I used that. I found it cheaper, more economical, not cheaper, more economical to have the company registered in Pondicherry because the tax was lower. So I registered in Pondicherry and I started my company here called Platinum Infosystems. Platinum, because I was doing a lot of work with IBM, they asked me to actually join them. And I said, no, let me, let me work for IBM from outside. So this was another thing. You know, these things come when you are passionate. Help comes from where you never think it will come. But for that, you have to first help yourself. So I got help where IBM empaneled me without even a balance sheet. Normally, you have to have three years balance sheet to become an IBM partner. But they empaneled me because I had worked with them and they realized that there is a, a race horse here which they could use. And everything is about business. You have to be a, a horse which can win races. Otherwise, nobody's going to look at you. They empaneled me and the first year, I got the IBM Business Partner of the Year Award. And when I went on stage to take the award, 
and they said, okay, it's Sadhana Samashekar, Managing Director of Platinum. The runner-up was a company called Axel with Mr. Panikkar, who was a CMD there. Everybody thought I was a big company or at least a medium-sized company. Nobody knew that I was just a one-woman show or one-person show with a computer in her bedroom and doing everything myself. Once I won that award, I realized I am not cut out to be an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, like many of you who are listening to the show, is somebody who can do everything and who's happy being the owner of their company. I am a, I am a person who has to belong to a corporate environment. I need to come to an office. I need predictability of seeing people around me. So I realized that I had proven to myself that what I achieved was a large part because of me. So this is another message to you. You, cre you have to keep reiterating your self-belief. You cannot think that your success is because some of somebody else. And let me tell you, I have observed this among men and women. You ask a man, hey, how come you're so successful? You know what a man will say? Oh, I'm a dude. I'm a cool dude. That's why I'm successful. You ask a lady in any company, you know what she'll say? I had a fantastic boss or I had a great HR or my customer was fantastic. Why are we always passing on the credit to somebody else? Learn to take credit for yourself. There is nothing bad. It's how you take it. If you're not arrogant, if you have the humility to, to understand that what the meaning of the credit is, take credit for yourself. This is one big difference between men and women. We constantly undermine ourselves. Men always say, I did it because I'm good. Right? So uh, I decided that was it. And then I had an opportunity of joining either one of the three big companies, TCS or IBM, or another smaller company. And that's when Focus Infotech, a company which with I was doing business as a consultant, said, why don't you join me? It was a small organization, barely about eight and a half crores. And this was something sometime in 2003. Uh, since then, we are a three, three per eight partners. Okay, I'm, I am there, uh, the only woman on the board. Uh, we've had a great innings and this company is going to grow even more because there are big plans for the organization. But here again, I won't, I'm not going to talk much about the business and the organization because that's a separate topic. And I, I, this is about you and me, women. I'm an ordinary woman. And what I want to share with you is, ordinary is just what the world thinks we are. If you think you're extraordinary, you can be extraordinary. Normally, I'll give you a few benchmarks. Normally, organizations like NASCOM, okay, I'm a part of NASCOM. I chair their diversity and in inclusion initiative for Tamil Nadu. Recently, that is in June, they have made me a part of their national steering committee. While this may sound, uh, you know, Greek and Latin to you, let me tell you what I want to communicate. Normally, big organizations don't look at small and medium companies for such roles. They will look at only big brands. They will look at Wipro, TCS, Infosys to become a chairperson for a steering committee. Why did they consider Sadhana from a 100 plus crore company to be their chairperson? You know why? Initially, I was a part of the steering committee and everybody else were from big organizations. But I used to carry the ball and run with it. When any DNI initiative would be there, I would make sure even not just when a conference is happening, but before that, I was active in that forum, more active than probably people who have to do it as a job. When you do something, when you run with it, when you perform, people cannot but help look at you. It does not matter where you come from, which country you come from, which company you come from, which family you come from. If you're a performer, even if you're a performer on the street, if you perform, people will notice. They don't have a choice but to notice you. They may not like you, but you will get respect. So that is how, because I was active and I took the ball and I ran with it, I became somebody in NASCOM. A small person, but I still became somebody. Now these are reaffirmations for myself that if you have the will, there is nothing can that stop you. You have to stop saying that you have this challenge and that challenge. You know, what I do with challenges, I consider them like how Mary Com would have got many, many, she must have been hit so many times to have got that medal. If you don't have the biggest blows, how can you become a champion? If she had got blows only from mediocre people, when a world champion punched her, do you think she could have taken that? So for me, I, I'm telling you, I respect and really look up to people who punch me. Because the more they punch, the more blows life gives you, the stronger you become. You just have to look at the blow and say, come hit me. I, will, I may fall down, but I will get up. And even if you fall down, fall with your head up. Don't fall on your face. 
So this is what I have to tell you all. I am extremely, uh, what do you say, I can keep talking and talking, but I don't want to confuse you anymore. I just want to tell you, you are Shakti. You have more hormones than men and hormones make you strong. Use it. You are double X factor. What is X factor? Strength. You have two X's. We have everything. Just take it, face it and don't look back.